Well, as Jesus uh, gathered with the crowd, one of the individuals within the crowd said, uh, Master teacher, did you not say that we should judge not? The Lord responded and said, I actually said judge not, lest ye be judged. Condemn not, lest you be judged and condemned as well. Forgive as you have been forgiven, and give as you would desire for it to be given to you. Good measure, shaken together, pressed down, and overflowing. And the Lord paused for a few moments, seriously looked into the eyes of everybody there in the crowd and said, knowing their hearts, you hypocrites, have you not heard what I've said before? First remove the log out of your own eye and then attempt to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. Chilling words, aren't they? You know, I wrestled with this message for a while trying to find God's timing and when he wanted me to bring it to our attention this morning. You'll find the text of all of what I've just shared with you out of Matthew account as well as Luke's account. We'll be referring to that here in just a few moments. But if you have your Bibles, you might want to flip there into Matthew, the seventh chapter, and I believe Luke, the sixth chapter. And keep your fingers there as we look at this together. The title of my message is Eye Surgery. It's been quite a few years ago now, but I uh, stood up in my office there at First Baptist Church of Maysville in preparation to going out and preaching that particular Sunday morning. And I just uh, had a window right there in my office, and I looked out and I saw a flash of lightning in the sky. And I thought, well, the sky is blue. I don't see any clouds. And it happened again. Well, went on in to preach. That afternoon, we were making our way to youth camp at Grand Oaks. And I noticed I wasn't driving. My a youth minister was driving. And I noticed that there were just like thousands and thousands of black birds in the sky. And I thought, well, that's kind of strange. Didn't think too much about it, but went on to camp and during the week of camp, I noticed that in my left eye, it was like a, an upside down shade was coming down and I was noticing less and less vision in my left eye. Well, camp was over and so I thought, well, this is kind of strange. So I went and saw my local doctor and the nurse practitioner was there. And so she looked at my eyes and said, I really can't see anything that's going on. Uh, out of the ordinary, but I would recommend that you go see an ophthalmologist uh, the first part of next week. Well, we were planning on going to Trenton because they were in the building program and we'd already planned a mission trip to Trenton. So being the hard-headed individual that I was, we went on to the mission trip up in Trenton and that situation kept getting worse and worse and worse. I was seeing less and less in my left eye. And so by Tuesday, uh, the Lord finally hit me with a two before over the head and said, you need to go see an ophthalmologist. And so I called a good friend and made arrangements in St. Joe. And, and so Geneva and I left Trenton, went on to St. Joe and got there that late in that afternoon. And he looked at my eyes and said, uh, I'm going to call a specialist in uh, Kansas City and you need to go down there this evening and see him. So we went down to Kansas City, saw the specialist and he said, uh, you have a detached retina. And if you don't get this treated quickly, you're going to lose your eyesight in your left eye. So he scheduled surgery that night. Went to Shawnee Mission Hospital and had surgery. They took their magnifying glasses and all the doctors and the nurses gathered around and put me under an anesthetic. And next thing I knew, I woke up and uh, he said, uh, you need to keep your head in this pillow upside down for 24 hours until this thing heals itself. 
I still have poor vision in my left eye. I have double vision if I allow myself to look at both of those eyes together. But thank the Lord, the brain takes over, and I'm right eye dominant, so it takes over. And so I don't see double. Uh, there's not 140 of us here this morning. <laughs> or thereabouts. But you know what? I am so thankful, so thankful that the doctors used those magnifying instruments and didn't have a log in their eye when they did surgery on my eye. That's what I want to talk about this morning. You know, I think that every one of us need a little bit of eye surgery this morning. Scripture says, and Jesus says, you hypocrites. Have you not considered the log that's in your own eye before you try to find the speck, even with some magnifying glasses, in your neighbor's eye? It's kind of like this. Well, friend, I, I really can't see that speck in your eye. All I can see is uh, two before. You got the point? That's what Jesus is talking about in our passage this morning. He calls us hypocrites, and I think that's rightly so. Strong words that the Lord shares with us at that point. But you remember the first thing that Jesus did when he was in the temple and they brought a woman that had been taken in adultery? The scribes and the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, had caught her in an act of adultery and brought her before the Lord Jesus. And before he spoke to the young lady that was there at his feet, he stooped down, the scripture says, and wrote something there in the dirt. We don't know what he wrote. It might have been particular sins. It might have been the names of some of those that were there in the courtyard that day. But in essence, he was saying to them, take the log out of your eye before you try to bring somebody else to my attention. That's what Jesus is reminding us of here in Matthew's account of that gospel. Look with me there, if you would, in Matthew, the sixth chapter, as we look at that together. Jesus says, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And then flip over with me, keep your finger there, but flip over with me to Luke account as well too of a similar passage in Luke the sixth chapter beginning there in verse 37. He expands upon this a little bit. Do not judge and you will be and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured out into your lap. For with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. Years and years ago, as I was in college, I was trying to witness to a person and they brought this scripture to my attention, although they took it out of context, which we take it out of context a lot of times. We think Jesus said, do not judge. No, he didn't say, do not judge. But he says, if you judge, God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit will hold us to the same accountability as what we would choose to judge someone else, or as Luke says, condemn someone else. So I want us to consider that very seriously very seriously this morning. What is Jesus really talking about? He's not talking about a two before or a plank. He's not talking about a speck of dust or a piece of sawdust in somebody's eye. No, he's talking about sins. That's what he's talking about. So he says to me, 
He says, before you point out the sins in someone else's life, you better look, Rodney, at your own sins. That's a log within your own eye, bigger and more obstructive than what you're trying to point out in somebody else's eye. So come to your senses in the same way that you judge someone else, I will hold you accountable in that same way. Sinfulness. That's what Jesus is talking about here in the text this morning. And then I thought it was interesting in Luke's account there in verse 39. Look with me and see what he says that Jesus shared with them on that day. He says, and also he told them this parable. Can the blind lead the blind? Can I possibly lead somebody else to the truth that is found in Jesus Christ if I am blind myself? Recognizing that I need to take care of my own blindness first. And that's what Jesus was talking about in this particular parable. And so he says to me with a log in my eye, you hypocrite. First deal with a log that's in your own eye before you attempt to deal with a speck that is in someone else's eye. God help us to take care of our own eye problem first. But usually we don't, do we? Very honestly. Usually we don't. We don't deal with our own unconfessed sins or our unacknowledged sins that are within our own, li own lives as well too. And so Jesus is saying to us, don't be too quick to judge others. For the same way that you judge others, he is going to hold us accountable as well too. For the same measure will be measured to you as well. That's why the person in the crowd theoretically said, Lord, did you say judge not? No, that's not what I said. Judge not lest ye be judged in the same way, in the same way. With the same measure that you judge, you will be held accountable. Now I want to flip over to John, the 21st chapter, because I think it relates to what we're talking about this morning. John 21, beginning there in verse 15. I'm not going to take time to read this whole passage to us this morning, but I hope it's familiar to you. After Jesus' resurrection, he gathered with his disciples and he was challenging them. And so he singled out Peter out of the disciples. And he asked Peter, remember those three times, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? And Peter responded, Lord, you know that I love you. But he uses different Greek terms here as he talks about love. And so he finally, the Lord Jesus finally resolved himself to the conversation and says, Peter, do you love me as a friend? Not agape love, because he recognized that Peter hadn't come to that level yet. But he asked him those three questions, those three times, and Peter responded. But I want to highlight what happens after this episode. Look with me there in verse 20. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved, which I believe was John, was following them. And this was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? And when Peter saw him, he asked him, Lord, what about him? What about him? How did the Lord respond? Don't worry about John. Peter, you worry about yourself. You worry about yourself. You know, I think that highlights what Jesus was talking about. In our state of hypocrisy at times, we're concerned about somebody else and how they're following Jesus or not following Jesus, more so than, Rodney, how are you following me? And that's how the Lord responded to Peter. 
Don't worry about John. You follow me. You take the log out of your eye, and then you'll be able to help John in his fellowship. Folks, we deal with issues all the time. We judge, we condemn. We're reluctant to forgive when we need to forgive because we haven't looked at the two before in our own eye before we try to point out the speck in somebody else's eye. I call it the revival circle. And I'm going to challenge myself as well as everybody here as well as those that are looking online. You can do this at home or you can do it right here. But what Jesus is really saying to us is before you deal with the sins in somebody else's life, deal with your own sins first. Are you willing to step into the circle? and take the log out of your own eye first. Folks, this is where we need to live every day, in the revival circle. Only room for one, me, you, as we remove the log, and then God will use us in ministry. It's not a building north of town that we're talking about. It's not this building that we are worshiping in this morning. It's not hay rides and other things that we do in our ministry here. Even the shoe boxes, those are all important. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But when we get in our revival circle and take the log out of our eye, we'll be more effective in everything that we do. In everything that we do. Let's pray together. Father, these are tough, tough words that we've looked at this morning in the gospel account of Jesus gathering with his followers on this occasion. But Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit is working in our hearts today and those that are watching online as well too, that we will recognize and realize that when we perform ministry and desire to follow you faithfully and obediently, just like you told Peter, Peter, don't be concerned about somebody else. You look at your own self first and make sure that you are faithfully and obediently following me. And with my help and my direction and my leadership under the Holy Spirit as well, and God the Father, you'll be able to accomplish all of what I desire for you to do as you examine your own heart and your own life first. We ask this, Father, in the master's name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior this morning. In his name we pray, and amen.